Let's move on to cross country, Gordon. We had the East Bay Cross Country Championships in San Diego, and Natalie Cook and Riley Ho prevailed with the victories. Cook from Texas, Ho from Michigan. Let's start first with the the girls' race. There, Cook was coming off running lane title where she dominated. We thought that she would be the person to beat in this race. Turned out that was the case. She went out hard from the gun, had a nice, comfortable lead for a good portion of it. Angelina Perez and Jenna Mulhern really closed the gap, though, coming up to that last hill, and it looked like they could overtake Cook, but she had plenty left coming off the hill and into the final stretch. She won by almost five seconds. Perez came in as the number two ranked runner. She was she was moving really well. She was back early on, but she gets up for second, and Mulhern was third, but Natalie Cook, 17, 15. They say 17 minutes is the the marker for all time on this course. I know it rained during the week. They said it was make it faster, but it's hard to tell uh, with, with all those hills and all the different um, conditions there with the dirt and the mud. But good back-to-back for, for Natalie Cook. You can say she is clearly the best girl high schooler who competed this this fall. Yeah, the first ever running lane East Bay champion. Yep. Right? It, was, it was always the Foot Locker NXN champion. Now we have the running lane East Bay champion. Uh, and she pulled off the, no doubt about it, best runner. I mean, there was a Jenna Hutchinson not running, but she's Hutchinson. basically declassifying from this season because she's going right to BYU next, next year. So uh, she's the best runner in the nation. And she's going to Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State has got a really good runner and Cook, who should be an immediate impact, should be able to help that team. And uh, I'm sure Dave Smith is thrilled to have someone of her talent come into uh, Stillwater. And they they host, is it next year they host? Next yeah, so year. she'll be running cross on her, on the courses she'll be training on. So it'll be a good, buy some Cook stock now uh, before it's mm-hmm. too late. Um, then she should be potentially a top 20, maybe top 10 person at the NCAA level. Mm-hmm. Only one loss on the year, and that was in Woodbridge, which was a very competitive race out in Southern California that she traveled to. But one UIL, one running lane, one East Bay, just an incredible string of victories for her. And on the men's side of things, a little more open because every a lot of people were leaning Gavin Sherry out of the Northeast because we didn't see him at running lane where Riley Ho, we saw Zane Bergen, we saw... And Gavin Sherry took this thing out hard. He was leading. Riley Ho and Keenan Paula, who was from San Diego, had raced on the course multiple times, caught him on that final downhill. And Ho just was shot out of a cannon off that final hill. And that's a massive downhill. That's not something that you see in most cross-country courses. And he took full advantage of it. And he put the race away in the matter of seconds. And he ends up winning by three seconds here in 15-11 to Paula's 15-14. Sherry still ran well, uh, finished third in 15-17. Zane Bergen, who was the top non-Newberry Park runner in running lane, was fourth with uh, 15-20. Yeah, Ho, you know, it's always good to see athletes athletes be able to kind of flip the script on themselves a week later. It shows mm-hmm. that uh, they don't, you know – resort they they understand that it's just one race and they're able to kind of recalibrate and do better in a second race it's a good sign for their future because um it shows that they're able to not take defeats um too seriously and be able to kind of Mm -hmm. bounce back a week later and i mean he had no reason to think he was the favorite going into east bay right he had lost to someone else who's going to be in the field there was a guy named Mm -hmm. gavin sherry in the field so he probably was thinking at best i'm a top five guy but then yeah. he goes in and he wins, and that shows like, hey, you're doing it, uh, you're doing it the right way. You're recalibrating after a, a, a tough fifth place finish, and then you end it with the win. So I'm sure he's thrilled to have the season he had. I mean, if you look at his season, he's first, 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 first everywhere except for running lane, and then mm-hmm. he ends it with the first place. Wow, he raced a lot. Oh my god, how many wow. times did this guy run? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. Okay, this is 
He ran 17 times. I'm sorry, NCAA, college coaches, NCAA <laughs> runners who are age 18 to 22. You only can run three to four times. This guy ran freaking 17 5Ks. Even if he cut he that in half run? and make it a mall yeah, 10Ks, he's, I don't know if they're he's all still 5Ks. running eight. He's running eight plus five, 10Ks. You can run at least more than four freaking races. Hey, man. Do you think he'll run more? So what do you, than 17 times in his entire collegiate career or less? I bet he won't run more than 17 times. Oh, he'll run less than 17 cross-country races in his college career. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. And that's Scroll kind of Scroll down crazy. again. Travis, are all these invites or a lot of these just like random duels? They're like okay, dual I meets feel and like stuff. Yeah. Some invites. I Yeah, I love that. I like like on... So on like on on September fourteenth, Plymouth at Heartland duel. Like it's just funny that like, the best runner of the nation goes and runs a dual meet. I mean, it's awesome, and of course they should. But I I saw the same thing when I was going through Newberry Parks like season, and it was like they show up to the Marmonte League number three meet, and they're in this race with kids running eighteen nineteen minutes because those kids are out there. They're just in high school cross country. They don't know that they happen to be in the same league as the best cross country team in history. Like, that's tough. In football, <laughs> if you win against the best football team in history in high school, you'd know about it for a long time, and you'd probably try to get out of the game at some point <laughs> because it, it wouldn't go well. Or even basketball, it would just be ridiculous because you'd line up, you know, the starting lineups would be called, and everybody would be like six eight. But in cross country, it's just no big deal. Let's do it. I, yeah, 17 yeah. times. That's a lot. I'm going to write it down. Uh, remember this. Remind me in 2026 or whatever. Uh, yeah. He will run 